If we look at ionic bonding, we have to transfer an electron from one element to another element. Sodium chloride, for instance, when that's formed, sodium gives up an electron and gives it to chlorine. So we have the ionization of sodium and the electron affinity of chlorine involved. That is, pulling off an electron from sodium and adding an electron to chlorine. So let's look at that. Here's the ionization energy for sodium, 496 kilojoules per mole. I have to put in 496 kilojoules per mole to pull a mole of electrons off a mole of sodium atoms. When I add a mole of electrons to a mole of chlorine atoms, what I get is 349 kilojoules released. Now here you sense a problem because the amount of energy released when I add the electron onto the chlorine is not enough to pull electrons off sodium. So why does sodium chloride form? Pulling off the electron costs more than adding it to the chlorine. Well, obviously there's another component. There's several components involved. One of the most important components is after you pull that electron off, then the sodium and chlorine ions can form this plus minus plus minus ionic lattice of coulombically attracted sodium and chlorine ions. And that's a tremendously stable, strong interaction. And the formation of that lattice releases a tremendous amount of energy. So that extra release of energy, the formation of the ionic bond, is what gives you enough energy to overcome the ionization energy of the sodium. In fact, the formation of sodium chloride is a spectacular reaction. And we'll look at it in the demonstration lab. We'll see metallic sodium and gaseous chlorine dramatically form sodium chloride. And that's because that stabilization of plus, minus, plus, minus ionic bonded lattice is a very, very, very strong interaction. Sodium and chlorine form an ionic bond due mainly to the fact that the Coulombic interaction is so strong.